crisis watch is needed today because we are seeing violent conflicts and mass displacement at very high levels. In relation to conflict fatalities, we're talking about the highest number uh, since the turn of the 21st century and among the highest numbers since the Second World War. In relation to mass displacement, we are talking about over 100 million of people who are displaced today, in part because of violent conflict. So clearly, with effective conflict prevention, we can save lives. And Crisis Watch is part of this journey. A crisis Watch is about detecting conflict shifts in places all over the world, focusing specifically on uh, conflict situations, situations of potential conflict and vulnerable states in order to track conflict trends and alert policymakers uh, as regards places to watch in uh, coming weeks, coming months, uh, so that they can act. I think we have made a lot of progress in relation to early warning in the past 20 years. And one case in point is actually what uh, the International Crisis Group has developed with Crisis Watch, our early warning bulletin. Uh, it's been in place since uh, September 2003, and so we are celebrating its uh, 20th anniversary. Crisis Watch is tracking about 70 situations every month, uh, releasing a state of play on a monthly basis. But more than that, it is also trying to understand how situations uh, are moving from month to month. It is providing assessments, for example, looking at overall deterioration from one month to the other, improvement or whether a situation has remained the same. Crisis Watch also sound the alarm, uh, offering uh, conflict risk alerts about the coming months, as well as potential conflict resolution opportunities. It is important to note that the information, the data from Crisis Watch, comes from the work of our analysts uh, who are based in or near um, conflict areas, as well as open sources that our Brussels-based research team collects. I'm thinking about the case of Ethiopia. This is a very good example of where we sounded the alarm in a timely manner for all to see. In 2020, the situation grew particularly tense between Tigrayan leaders and the federal government. Prime Minister Abiy decided to postpone elections nationwide in relation to COVID. But Tigrayan leaders pushed back. They still wanted to go ahead with their plans to hold elections. In June 2020, in particular, we issued uh, in our crisis watch concerns about heightened tensions. We followed up in July, warning about the fact that the situation reached critical point. We recommended a, a number of steps to de-escalate tensions. However, the elections went ahead in September in October, we warned again that the political situation was near breaking point and we explained that we could see escalating fighting in coming weeks. Eventually, in early November 2020, the war started between the federal government and uh, the Tigrayan leaders. So clearly, in relation to forecasting, Crisis Watch did it well, we started to sound the alarm as far back as May, June uh, 2020, and the conflict uh, erupted in, in November uh, 2020. So we're talking about uh, five, six months of advance warning. In our field, um, uh, tools to forecast conflict have grown more sophisticated. Crisis Watch is a case in point. In order to forecast conflict accurately, it's important to keep in mind three elements. Casting the net wide in order to uh, keep an eye on all places with structural strains, plus uh, checking on a regular basis conflict trends, and lastly, having a regular uh, review of the triggers. All of that enables us to uh, detect with some accuracy many of the potential violent conflicts going ahead. 
I will add that another specificity of uh, Crisis Watch and the organization as a whole, the International Crisis Group, is that we are also keeping a particular eye on actors' behavior. Because at the end of the day, a violent conflict erupts because particular actors decide to do so. And this sort of very uh, regular check on um, ways conflict parties are behaving is also uh, enabling us to, to keep the pulse on uh, conflict trends all over the world. One example is Yemen. Um, the situation there is, of course, still extremely concerning. It's, it's one of the most violent conflicts that we have seen uh, in the last decade. Crisis Watch was there in 2015 when the conflict broke out. We shoot about eight down hours in 2015 alone, warning about the risk of state fragmentation and further escalation between uh, conflict parties. A good example of why early warning works is the case of Odeda. At the time in 2018, the um, Saudi-led coalition, which was allied with the Yemeni government, was planning an attack on the Red Sea port of Odeda, which was extremely uh, important and strategic for the um, Houthi rebels. We issued at the International Crisis Group a number of crisis switch conflict risk alerts analytical reports and we conducted advocacy to really warn all actors about the potential humanitarian cost of such an attack, but also the associated costs in relation to the likelihood of escalating fighting between conflict actors. Ultimately, uh, the United Nations made the potential attack on Odeda center front of its negotiations with the conflict parties. In December 2018, the conflict parties agreed to a ceasefire in Odeda. At the time, that was a major step forward, and that wouldn't have happened without a contribution like ours, sounding the alarm about the risk of major escalation there. Another example, and this is important to insist on it, is that we also uh, put the spotlight on uh, places that are off the radar. I will give you here the example of Haiti. Crisis Watch started to monitor the situation in Haiti as far back as uh, 2017. And so when uh, President Moïse was assassinated in July 2021, Crisis Watch had already issued a number of warnings to the international community about the growing political crisis. In February 2021, in particular, there were violent protests because people wanted uh, President Moïse to step down. And so when President Moïse was assassinated in July 2021, um, the organization International Crisis Group uh, was able to quickly explain some of the underlying causes uh, behind this violent conflict, as well as provide some recommendation related to the way forward. I have been working at the International Crisis Group for nine years now, and prior to that, I worked for a global human rights organization for about 10 years. Too many people still die uh, from violent conflict, and it is preventable. Early warning tools uh, clearly work. It is possible in many cases to detect conflict. More than that, it needs to be followed by early action from relevant policy makers so as to stop these violent conflicts from happening in the first place or particular escalation in fighting from happening. So why should governments invest in early warning? Because it saves lives and because it works. <laughs>